Hello guys, today I want to share some guidelines how to write a better code when working in a team so it would be consistent, readable and pleasant to use. But these guidelines are not my own, these are from Belgian company Spati, well known in Laravel community and recently I found out they have guidelines written for themselves, for their own team, but there's plenty of things that we can learn each and every one of us. And even if you're not working in a team, maybe you will in the future, or maybe your code will be maintained and taken over by someone else. So well-written and well-structured code is a goal for everyone. And in here I've picked five tips, five guidelines from Laravel and PHP repository from Spati, and I will add my own comments, discuss that, and share a few tips what to read and what to watch afterwards. So let's go. Laravel and PHP is the section of their guidelines. It's free, it's open source, and you can even actually contribute to that. So there is a link here to edit that GitHub. So if we click here, there is a repository. So there are pages that you can contribute in Markdown language. But in this video, I've picked five topics to talk about. And let's dive in. Topic number one is dog blocks and comments. And it's an interesting, almost philosophical discussion. In my development career, I've been always hearing that comment your code and then it will be understandable by everyone. But what Spotty team is saying here, and I agree with them, don't use dog blocks for methods that can be fully type hinted. So PHP now allows a lot of things to make the parameters clearer. So type hint the parameters what the method returns, the naming of the method. So instead of writing dog blocks and comments, you can use the PHP functions, the PHP syntax to make it clear and understandable. And similar thing related to comments. So if we click on the comments, here's the sentence. Comments should be avoided as much as possible by writing expressive code. So basically the naming of your things in Laravel or in PHP, like variables, methods, class names, and all of that, like job names, they should be understandable from their names, not from the comments. And also I like the idea by them that you can create a private method of that class or that controller, for example. So if you have a comment like start calculating loans or start some job, and then there are five lines of code related to that. So why don't you take those five lines and refactor into separate method with one name, calculate loans, and then it's readable without any comments. I quite like this idea. Section number two that I've picked to discuss here in this video is if statements, and there are three subsections. So bracket position, these curly brackets, they should be always present, especially in junior developers code. I see they're trying to make their code shorter and avoid these and write the actual statement. It could be one statement on the same line or on the next line below. But in my opinion, shorter code is not always better. So if you have curly brackets, you see visually that it's a block of code. So even if it's one sentence, I would totally vote for using curly brackets at all times. And also with that if statements, there are two things that I've personally learned in the past from Jeffrey Way from Laracast. It's happy path means that a lot of developers focus on the good condition, something that is good, that is validated and correct and all of that. And only then if something goes wrong, they throw an exception. But a better thing, in my opinion, and I agree with Spati guys, is that first you focus on everything bad that could happen. If something is not right, you throw an exception. If something is wrong, you redirect back with error. If something goes wrong, then do something. And only then, otherwise, if the validation passes, then do all the work. And related to that, avoid else statements by doing so-called early returns. So again, same thing. If your function can return false or return exception or something, it should be in the beginning of the function. And then if the conditions pass, then you do the main thing instead of having this. So if, then if, then else, it is harder to read. Would you agree? And it's not only about readable code. It's about the mind thinking. You focus on what could go wrong. And this is one of the things that I lack in junior developers, I think. They don't think enough about exceptions, about validations, about something that could be inputted invalid, about security issues and all of that. And by doing those conditions first, you can actually focus on what could go wrong. And this would make your application more stable in the long run. It's kind of like a habit that you can grow with every example. And if you focus on bad things first, it would actually be good for your application. 
Third topic I want to discuss is white space. So when to use white space between the sentences and between the blocks of code. Party team has a take on that, that in general always add blank lines between statements. But it depends on the context. What is a statement? This is a statement. So it's kind of block of code around some condition. And that should be white spaced before and after. So compare this code to the code where everything is together. Would you agree that it is harder to read and understand what is what? So again, shorter code is not always better and fewer lines of code is not always better. Readability comes first. But of course, it depends on the context. So for example, in here in migrations, you shouldn't do any spaces and too many spaces like in this case is also bad. What I would say is that you should treat your code like paragraphs of text, like you would write a book. This is a paragraph with one thought and then there's another thought with a different paragraph. Paragraph may contain one sentence only or maybe more sentences. And a few shorter topics towards the end of this video. So validation. Spati team advises not to use separator for multiple validation rules. Instead, use array. Laravel allows both ways, but if you use array all the time, even if for one rule, then later it's easier to add custom rule. And what is a custom rule? I've opened Laravel validation for that. If you want to create your own custom validation rule, for example, with your own rule of what passes or fails, then you can add that rule easily if you use array syntax for validation rules. If you use separator, then you cannot easily add that. And in general, array syntax is readable just because of those spaces. That's my personal opinion. So this is not that readable because you need to visually see the separator. And if there are four or five rules, then it's even harder. If it's an array, then the rules are separated and visible and readable. And the last topic to discuss is controllers and the naming of the things. So in here, I don't necessarily agree with Spati guys. In their opinion, it's plural resource name if the controller manages the resource, so resource controller, and it should be named posts controller. But in my video, in my popular video on how to name various things, I've shown that by default in Laravel, if you create make model book, for example, then the controller is automatically created with singular book controller. So if it is done by default in Laravel, I'm not sure it makes sense to override that default condition and make the controller differently from default Laravel. But that's a personal preference. Both should work. And generally throughout those guidelines, you can find the naming things. So camel case for views, for example, or artisan commands should be dash here. And it is a preference of their team, of Spati team, but there are things that are kind of standards for the whole market. So if you go to the very top about Laravel, there are PSR standards. So I totally recommend to read those PSR 1, 2 and 12 and configure your IDE, whether it's PHP Storm or VS Code to automatically format the code according to those guidelines. And if you want more information on how to name things in Laravel, the video is in the top left corner now. I will link that my own video that I've just shown a minute ago. And if you want to support me to shoot more videos like this one, discussing my own best practices and from the team like Spati, you can support the channel financially by checking one of the three products you can see on the screen now and see you guys in other videos.